to do is uh, indicate that before you publish it. If there's an objection, then uh, the defense should make the objection at that time. But if there's no objection, I don't have an issue doing that, okay? All right. Are you ready for the jury, Mr. Orman? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready for the jury? Yes, sir. Okay, let's bring him in. Okay, the records are reflected. The jury, jury is back in the courtroom. Everyone may be seated, please. Mr. Orman, call your next witness, please. Officer T.J. Campagna, Your Honor. for or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do so swear. Please be seated. Please tell us your full name and spell your first and last names. My full name is Thomas Joseph Campagna, spelled Thomas, T-O-M-A-S, Campagna, C-A-M-P-A-G-N-A. -A -A. Mr. Orman, you may proceed. Who do you work for? City of Aurora Police Department. How long have you been a police officer with Aurora? Twelve years. How about before that, were you a police officer with any other agency? I was not. I want to ask you questions about the early morning hours of July 20th, 2012. What was your duty assignment at the time? In other words, where were you assigned with the police department? I was assigned to the summer task force. What was the summer task force? It's basically a complement to patrol. What shift were you working? A swing shift. Tell us what that is, when the hours are. It's 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. And were you one of the responding officers to the shootings at the Aurora Century 16 Theater? Yes. What time did you first hear about something going on at the theater? Radio transmission was uh, 0 39 hours, I believe. What does that mean in real people time? Midnight, just after midnight, 39 minutes after midnight. So would 039 be 12.39 a.m.? Correct. Okay. If you give us any more times, could you just talk in like regular time and not police time? Yes. Okay. Where were you when you first got the call? I was at the city jail on an unrelated arrest. How far is the city jail from the theater? I'd say less than a quarter of a mile. Now, were you actually like deep inside the jail or were you at the front of the jail? In the booking area of the jail, so deep. And what, what, was the, what were you actually doing? I don't need you to tell us about this other guy, but what were you doing there? Uh, booking a prisoner in on a warrant. When you heard the call, were you able to leave right away? No, we weren't. They, the person that we were booking in was in on a drug charge. The person needed to be searched and cleared by the jail before they let us go. and actually held us there what seemed like a period of time just because of what was going on on the radio, but it ended up, I'm sure it ended up being seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, that they wouldn't actually let us leave and unlock the door for us to get out. Would it be fair to say you expedited that booking process? Yes, as much as we could. Tell me then about getting from the jail to your car and into the theater. How did that work? Exit the jail, into the police car, lights and sirens, whoever drove, I don't forget who drove, but whoever drove uh, turned on the lights and sirens and we responded to the jail 
West Alameda, southbound Sable. You say you don't remember who drove. Were you with a fellow officer? Yes, a fellow officer, Officer Luke Mossberg. Could, can you spell that last name? M-O-S-S-B-U-R-G-H. If we could please, I believe, Your Honor, 4741 is admitted, and if, if I'm correct about that, I'd like to publish that at this time. Let me check. Can you show 47, 41 admitted? Yes, we both do. My staff and I both do. So, yes, it is admitted. Can we put that up, please? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Why don't you take a look around, um, and once, you, once you're done pouring your water at this image here, do you recognize that? Yes. Okay. Um, just so the jury knows, where would the jail be in relation to this picture? And if you need to stand up and point, there's a pointer to your right and there's a handheld microphone behind you that you can use, or you can keep your voice up. Okay. I'll keep my voice up. Okay. So the city jail would be, it's off the picture actually. This is a bus depot. And then to the north and east, so up here would be the jail and the District 2 headquarters. And that street that's running north and south to the right of the photograph, which street is that? This is Sable Boulevard. Can you describe using this picture uh, when, you, when you first get onto this, the route that the police car you were in took and where you ended up stopping? Uh, the police car, we drove from the city jail up here, westbound Alameda, to southbound Sable. How'd you get into the theater complex? Uh, it became congested once we got to this to this area. Uh, this road has a big a median in it. And and just for the record, you're gesturing to a, a center point drive. Okay. Please continue. Okay. Once we arrived in this vicinity, we noticed Officer Mossberg and I noticed that there was no way to get any further in. Officer, we both elected at the same time almost simultaneously, let's just park here. So we parked at the, would be northeast corner, or excuse me, southwest corner of Sable and Center Point. Did you actually park in the street? I think, I, I think we kind of jimmied it up on the sidewalk a little bit. All right, why don't you take a seat again? Okay. We can take that down. Now, did you receive any information on the way to the theater uh, that made you think you needed to get your gas mask? Yes, officers were inside at that point, radioing that they needed gas masks. One, one sergeant used an expletive gas mask, so it was very stuck out in our heads that we needed them. When the car got parked, did you try to get your gas mask out? I did. Why don't you tell us what happened when you did that? Once the car was parked, I went to the trunk where we keep a where we keep our equipment tried to get it out of the trunk and through the evening's activity it must have shifted things must have shifted on top of it it was difficult to get out um, in order to to get there quickly i feel felt that it wasn't important enough to get the gas mask from the trunk it was just too hard and i felt like i was wasting time so i left it i didn't bring it with me what did officer mossberg do he was gone already he he had Took, took off. How long do you think you took trying to get your gas mask? Ten seconds. Then tell me about where you went from the car parked at Centerpoint and Sable after you tried to get the gas mask to get towards the theater. Tell me what you did. From that corner I went south and west. There's a berm up to the theater parking lot. From there I kept going south and west. I used to work at the theater and I knew where 9 was, so I went to the east side of the theater. Actually, can we put up 4741 again, please? Yes. Thank you. Why don't you demonstrate what you're talking about? Okay. So, parked here, spent time getting, trying to get the gas mask out and left it. This, this kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of a dirt berm right here and grass. And the quickest way up was the quickest way there was just to go up it. 
and I ran through this parking lot to the rear or east of the theater. Okay. And if we could, Your Honor, I believe it's already been admitted, if we could please put up 4739. Yes. Thank you. Sir, why don't you uh, use the microphone here? There's a handheld microphone right there. Do you see it right over here? Yes. And if you would speak into it, please, when you're away from the microphone right there. Yes, sir. Thank you. You, you need to turn it on. There's a button on there. There you go. Is it on? Yep. <laughs> okay. This is a little closer view. Why don't you demonstrate the, where you, the route you took and where you went? Okay. So this is... Basically, we were parked up here now. So being parked up here, I ran straight this way to the rear of the theater. So sort of down that um, area with the parking stripes and where it curves around towards the uh, where that, that dumpster area is behind the theater? Yes. And if you can, you see that sort of sidewalk out there with the, the parking stripes that's directly attached to the theater? Yes, on the behind east side it. here. Actually, a little farther down. Right here. There, yeah, well, up there a little bit. There you go. Did you see any injured people there when you were approached? There were injured people r sitting, standing here, f from here, excuse me, to here. Okay, so all the way sort of from that emergency this, exit door to Theater 9 from the corner of the theater. This entire piece of sidewalk. Okay. Why don't you sit down? I might ask you a more, couple more questions about this picture, so we can just leave that up for a minute. Tell me now about what you saw, the injured people that you saw as you were approaching the door to the Theater 9. There were, I, I didn't take account, there were several people, it seemed, in that, from that corner where I pointed to, to, the, to that spot ending outside the theater, several people wounded, um, wounds ranging from scratch to holes to not able to walk because of the holes to is quite the scene were other officers or anyone else present assisting those people yes other officers were did you start participating in that i did tell us what you did Basically, visual, visual assessment to the best of my ability, whether or not they needed help. Um, did they need to be taken to a transport vehicle? Did they need to be basically seeing who needed what at, at what point? Kind of triage, but it wasn't triage because I'm not medically trained, but almost visually who might have needed more help over another. If you saw someone that looked like they needed a lot of help, what'd you do? Stopped and, and motioned, hey, help this guy, let's get the, this person some help, please. Kind of yelling and motioning to the person. Did you help any of them get into any type of vehicle? Later on, yes, I did. All right, was, yeah. was this before or after you went into the theater? I went, I went inside the theater. All right, let, let, let me stop you there for a second. Uh, when you helped people, was that before or after you went into the theater? Intermittently, I was in and out. All right, so I want to break this down then. Okay. The, the first time where you're outside and you first start helping assess people, at that point in time, did you help anybody into vehicles? No. Okay. What, how long would you say you spent out there assessing people and seeing if they needed help? Not long. It was in passing. I felt needed inside the theater. I, they did not say they were done with uh, checks for other, other assailants. They didn't say they were done helping people inside, it's, it seemed as if that was the, this portion of the scene that needed the most attention at that point. So you, we, we can take that down, thank you. Tell me then about going into the theater, and I want you, want you to sort of describe going into that little uh, walkway that goes into the emergency exit, what you might have seen, and then entering the theater, what you've seen and experienced. Uh, there's a range of emotion and sight, sound, smell was, it smelled very, very bad. It smelled like fecal matter mixed with urine, mixed with blood, mixed with sweat. 
uh, it's it's hard to explain unless you've smelled it. It's it's a horrible smell. Um, Where was that? Where did you smell that horrible smell? From from running from my car to the sidewalk. It, the smell got stronger and stronger as I went toward the the rear entry to the theater, the actual theater nine. How about once you went inside? It was overwhelming, along with along with tear gas that had been some portion, some sort of gas that it was making. My eyes tear, my my nose start to run, um, a lot of saliva in my mouth from it. While you were going into the theater and, and getting in there, did you notice anything unusual on the ground? Yes. Uh, in going in, actually inside the theater, I saw a AR-15 style rifle on the ground along with a, a pink flip-flop, like a shoe next to it uh, underneath those were it was coated it looked like the sidewalk was painted red with what with it what appeared to be blood what smelled like blood what looked like blood all right you said you, you saw the AR on the ground as you were walking in what did you see on the ground as you walked in as I walked in it's a vestibule as you enter and you have to turn right and as you made the turn right and came in the the ground I could feel the ground sliding beneath my feet it was shiny um, coated with liquid probably fecal matter blood and urine um, along with it were cartridges 223 cartridges so full of the bullet and the casing several scattered scattered all over the entry ground area and as you went into the theater they were more prevalent uh, Empty casings of of two two three cartridge rifles or, or rifle rounds, excuse me, uh, forty caliber pistol rounds, shotgun shells, both spent and not spent. Uh, there was a shotgun. It's a, it looked to what be a, a Remington eight seventy, which is our patrol shotgun. So it's a familiar sight. Well, where was the shotgun? Shotgun was inside as you walked in. How far from that emergency exit would you say? 10 feet. And did you see any shotgun rounds on the ground near the shotgun? Or shells? In that, in that general area of it is where all the shells that I had mentioned and, and, and cartridges that I had mentioned were mixed, intermingled, were the, the 223 casings, the, the pistol casings, and the uh, shotgun shells. Sort of all in the same area? Yes. Normally, when you approach a, a crime scene of this nature, or of any nature, and you see things like shells on the ground, guns on the ground, uh, do you take measures not to interfere with that evidence? It's, yeah, it's obvious evidence, or obvi obviously something that's a portion of that crime scene that we don't try not to touch it, if at all possible, to even watch our steps so that we don't disturb the location in which they lay. Was that possible here? It wasn't possible to avoid every casing, no. It was definitely possible to be aware of the shotgun and the rifle and the flip-flop that you could make a conscious effort to, be, to step around those items. How about the, the casings? It's an, it was an impossibility. It was coated. coated with, the floor was coated with casings and, and cartridges. And <coughs> so do you think you and other officers may have kicked them around a little bit? Yes. How about the fleeing people? I'm sure. All right, so you've described what you saw on the ground as you were walking in and as you came in. I'd like you now to describe for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what the lighting and the ambiance of lighting was like in the theater and the noise that you might have heard. Tell us about that. The noises were varying. Um, at that point, the, the smoke alarm had gone off or the fire alarm had gone off, and in a, big, in a building like that, they've got audio, like audible f alarms that were, were so heavy that I, it, it hurts your ears. It actually physically hurts your ears when they go off. To, not to mention the flashing. It's like a fluorescent blue light that's emitted from each alarm as well. So it's blinking lights. And the, the movie was actually still running as well. Did you hear any screams from people or anything like that? No, just officers. When you went into the theater, did you see 
Any other officers? Yes. How many would you say? Several. How about injured people? Did you see injured people? Yes. Did you take any efforts to help any of the injured people? I did. Tell I, us about that. It was, it was t the same type of responses outside the theater. There were several unresponsive people inside the theater when I got in there. Um, I th it, it almost seemed as if they were done taking out people that were responsive, and now people were focusing more on unresponsive parties. Did you help carry anybody out? Yes. Tell us about that. At uh, one point, I found myself outside the theater, again, to check progress everywhere. So I was outside, standing on the sidewalk that I had indicated before. There were officers, there was an officer, a set of officers carrying a, a woman out, and the woman was to the, almost to the point of unconsciousness. I could hear her groaning, but there were officers on each of her limbs, is to say that each of them were holding a limb to carry her out. She was unable to do it herself. She was unable to, to ambulate or, or crawl. Or however she may have gotten out on her own, she couldn't do it. Uh, those officers were struggling to keep her in their grasp because they, she was covered in, in blood and, and sweat so much so that her skin basically became lubricated from it. And they were struggling to get her out, and I, I was fearful that one looked, one looked rather fatigued in, in, in getting her out that I t took his place, basically, and the only way to keep her in my grasp was to concentrate on holding her at the wrist. I took one of her arms to concentrate holding her at the wrist so that my hand could keep shut on that area so that it wouldn't get bigger to lose her hand. And that was about 50 feet or so from, maybe less, from a patrol car waiting to take her to the hospital. So did the other officers actually already have her out of the theater at this point? She was out, so this happened outside the theater, yes. And where did you and the other officers take her? We worked to get her into the, into the patrol car. It was rather hard. There was no, she couldn't help herself get in. So there, another officer went around to the other side of the car, got in the back seat, and as we were kind of getting her close, that other officer grabbed her and, and kind of pulled her into the car. And then what happened? She was, the door was shut and they, they took off for, for one of the hospitals that everybody was going to. Do you know who that was, that victim? I, I don't remember her name. Um, she, and I, at this point, I, I wouldn't try to speculate it. Could you describe what she looked like and what injuries you saw, other than the blood? Um, it was hard to tell her injuries, other than they were severe enough to, to make her lose consciousness or be close to losing consciousness. Uh, she was a, a larger woman. She had on what, what I think were black kind of, kind of sweatpant material and a t-shirt. Um, she might have had like a, a black cardigan on over that. After you helped get this woman into the vehicle and they, they took her away, what did you do? She was gone and I, I returned back to the people waiting outside the theater, or the people waiting to be taken, victims waiting to be taken outside the theater. Um, did you see anyone in particular that you tried to assist? It was one young lady, really slight young woman, very small, uh, had a bullet wound to one of her legs, and I forget which one it was, I'm sorry. Uh, the bullet wound was causing, it, it seemed to be causing her a lot of, not only pain, but anxiety. She, her, her, her jugular in her, in her neck was, was pulsating so rapidly that, I mean, it, it was odd to see such a, a little neck have such a big uh, pulse in it. it. It just, it looked different. It looked odd. And she was breathing rather rapidly. Her chest was rising and falling in in big breaths, up and down and up and down and up, and I mean never giving herself one rest of breath at all. Uh, it concerned me that she was going to put herself either into shock, was in shock, was going to pass out. I didn't 
she she looked worried. I sat next to her and tried to get her to focus on my my eyes, my voice, to try to calm her into at least some other state that she wasn't so anxious before we got her into a car to leave. Do you know who this was? Her name was Jasmine Kennedy. Did you manage to calm Miss Kennedy down? I think somewhat. Uh, honestly, I, I, I don't know what effect that had on her other than just to sit and, and talk to her for a second. Um, just, you know, reassure her that she was alive, she was okay in the sense that she hadn't passed away yet. So it was a conversation I don't remember the, most of the details of, but it seemed to take effect for her. And then as, as we were talking, we, I got word that more, more vehicles were available for transport. So, so did you get her into a vehicle? Did. I picked her up like a child and was actually kind of the path I took responding into the parking lot was the same path I ran to the, the We're actually ready, Sergeant Yorchek's police expedition that was waiting um, at the north northern end of that side of the parking lot. Can we put up 4739 again, Your Honor? Yes. Why don't you show us on this where you where you first saw Ms. Kennedy and then where you took her to in, into Sergeant Yorchek's car. Okay. So back here in this vicinity. Okay, and that's sort closer, of... Closer to the theater exit. Okay. And that's along that... Um, that's along sidewalk. that piece of sidewalk we discussed. Where'd you take her? Sergeant Yorchek was waiting near this portion of the parking lot right here. So and I, tell us what you did then there. Uh, just ran her from from this location to that location put her in the front passenger seat of the of the expedition and i we had spoken about her mother and how worried she was going to be or how uh you can sit she, down she expressed she expressed a need to, to call her mother at the point that we were sitting together on the sidewalk so i said you get your phone out call your mom let her know that you're going to the hospital um yelled at Yor Sergeant Yorchek and said, sir, where are you taking her? Um, he said to, to I, th I think children's, if I remember correctly. And uh, so she called and or was in the process of calling as they left. Now, was Jasmine Kennedy a, a kid or was she a small adult? Because you said she was a, a small person. I've forgotten her age, sir, but I, I seem to remember that she said she was a teenaged age of some sort. After you uh, got Miss Kennedy into the car up in that corner area, where'd the car go? Did you see it leave? The police car? Yes. Yes, out of the parking lot. Did it drive over that grass area or up the parking lot? I don't remember. He left. I remember seeing, focusing on her. I, I last thing I remember her seeing was raising the phone to her to her ear, uh, and I turned around and went back to back to this area right here, behind the theater. Uh, into the grassy area or back to the theater? This area. Right Okay, you can sit down again. Thank you. We can take that down. So when you went back there to that area, what did you do? It seemed that everything was kind of subsiding at that point. Uh, meeting of officers to decide who was going to secure the inside of the theater. And who was that going to be? It was myself and, and Officer Jeremy Stenerson. And where'd you go to do that? We went in back inside the theater and actually sat in the front row. Now, at some point, were you involved in taking the movie screen down? I was. When did that happen? And that's, that's what I have trouble with, the chronology, when that happened. Uh, some, I, I want to say that it was before I, had left the, before I had left to come out and contact Miss Kennedy. Uh, it probably was before I had, I had contacted the woman that we, ca we had to carry out four officers to her, to her one person. Uh, the, we were concerned with people inside, other people, whether they be victims or other assailants. And it was decided that the theater screen needed to come down to properly make sure. Now, I guess most of the time when you go into a movie theater, you may not realize that there's something behind that screen, but you said you used to work in that theater. Uh, is there a space behind the screen? 
It's a void, yep. It's a void, and I'd say it's a, it, it's a decent void. It's a void of almost as, or as wide as the, the jury box. So maybe 10, 15 feet? I'd, I'd say 10's fair. Tell us then, um, you, you said you were concerned you might have somebody behind that, air, that, that screen. What did you do to get that screen down? Tell us about that. The screens are attached by springs. It's almost like a, it's a fabric. It's attached by spring. The springs look like little trampoline springs. It's the only way I could, the only thing I could liken it to to make sense. But once you kind of took, kind of opened it from the, the whatever it was attached to, I felt it just give rather easily. And I thought this whole thing will come down if we pull on it. So I did. I started to pull it. Other officers aided in doing so, and it, it came down in halfway. It came down under its own weight. It was heavy enough to just break the springs itself. Did you find anybody behind the screen? There wasn't anybody else back there. I want to go back to the point now you said that you and your fellow officer were going to be sort of standing guard in the theater. Where were you when that happened? Where did you stand guard? We stood guard inside and also sat in the, in the, the in the front row of the theater seats. Did you see any deceased people? I did. Where were they? Uh, throughout the theater. Uh, there were... So I'm sorry, I'm working out direction in my head. I'm just going to use right and left, if that's all right. Well, were the, fair to say they were up in the stadium area. They were up in the stadium area. They were, there were, uh, there were three, two together, laying in the, there's kind of a portion where you walk in and it's separated by an aisle. What, what, we have this model here. Do you think it would be helpful? It uh, would. You, may we, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. And we're gonna we're gonna do this twice, but why don't you uh, talk talk about this area where you saw the three bodies? Okay. Um, excuse me. You want to stand to the side so the okay, jury right, can see. So the jury can see. Yeah. The three bodies were. There were two in this area right here. So sort of so up like here. So like in front of these yeah. seats here. Let me do this. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you describe where you saw the, the bodies? Okay. Okay. We're going to do this twice so the other side can see it. Okay. So there, were, there was a, a man here. And that's sort of in the first row of the stadium seating? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So just under at the, at the foot of these seats, uh, there was a man here. And I forget gender on the person laying. They were laying head to head. This person, I recall, was laid almost as if they fell to their knees and fell backward. Okay. So their feet were up under, his feet were up under his rear end. And that would be sort of to the right as you're looking at the screen in that first row of stadium seating? That's correct. So if, if this was the screen right here, it's to the right. That's correct. And where were the other ones you saw in that row? In this row, there was another person here. And then coming down the stairs, there was a gentleman who was laying across these stairs. So that first row of stairs on the left? That's correct, up to the stadium portion. And then were the other bodies above this in the stadium area? Yes. All right, let's shift this. And I need you to do that again. Okay. If you can show us where they, those bodies were in that first row and off to the side. Okay. So again, here... The one gentleman I had mentioned, the pointer's kind of going out. I'll just use my fingers. Okay. Here was one man was laying. The one I had described, it looked like he was kneeling when he fell. And then another person here and another man right here along these stairs laying head first. I forget on his back or stomach, I don't remember, uh, but laying this way kind of across these stairs, head pointing downward to the floor. And in this flat area here at the bottom, did you see any dead people? I don't recall that area, if I saw dead people here or not. And how about up here in the remainder? Yes, there were. There was a... Uh... Why don't you sit down? Okay.
you remember how many total you saw? Ten. Good. I'm sorry. Ten. Where were you when you were standing guard? We'd, we'd spent most of our time in the front seats, the actual seats between the void of the front of the theater and the screen and the first row of seating. We sat in the front. How long were you there? Until 4, 4.40 in the morning, 4.40ish in the morning. At some point, did they turn the movie off? It was, yeah, it was turned off during the initial uh, evac of the people. At some point, it just went off. At some point, do you remember if they turned the house lights on? They did. When was that? I, sure, I don't really remember. Sorry. At some point, do you remember if they turned that fire alarm off? Yes, they did. When do you think that happened? Uh, pretty quick. Once, once the theater was cleared, it seemed as if when we went back inside to secure it, that they were off at that point. I want to ask you about time that you were guarding the theater or sitting in that, the front of it to make sure uh, that it was secure, Did, were you allowing like the public or just anybody to come in there? Nobody was allowed in there. How about other police? Other police were allowed. And did other uh, police come in and out to, to work? Yes. Do you remember who? I saw, uh, and I, forgive me, we weren't close enough to actually, that, that particular theater has an entry into the theater from the top of the stadium seating. And a canine handler from another agency in a green uniform brought his canine through at one point. And a canine would be a, a drug sn or a bomb sniffing dog? A, a, yes, a police service dog of some sort, yes. I want to ask you about the time that you were, you were sit seated there. Uh, was the tear gas still in the air? It had dissipated by then. It was... My, my face was still affected a little bit. I still had tears in, that I remember wiping out uh, and some snot in my nose that was still kind of there, but it, well, I didn't need a tissue or anything at that point. So, Did you have a phone with you? I had my cell phone, yes, I did. And is that a smartphone? Yeah. At some point while you were sitting there up until 4 a.m., uh, did you check to see if uh, news about what had happened in the theater had uh, hit the news. Yes. What's the relevance? The relevance is, Your Honor, it's going to put the next events in time because uh, the next events he's going to talk about are relevant. I can approach if you want. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll trust that you'll do that. If there's another objection, Mr. King, make it right away. I'll, I'll give you some leeway. Thank you. Did you check to see if it hit the news? Yes. Did it? Yes. After that happened, did you hear or see anything occur inside the theater while you were watching it? Yes, we did. What was that? I did. Uh, there were several cell phones on the floor of the theater in the stadium seating near us, far away from us. There was a lot of cell phones in there. But one by one, you could hear either a vibrate or a ring, like a ringtone or songs that people had set for their ringtones that were ringing. How long did that go on? Intermittent. Overruled. And with that additional um, record that has been made, the uh, prior objection is overruled as well. Go ahead. How long did that go on? Intermittently throughout my, the period of time that I spent inside. And you said you left around 4 in the morning? Yes. Was it still going on? Yes. Can I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. I have no further questions. Thank you, officer. Mr. King, do you have any questions? Questions, Your Honor. All right. Let's see if the jury has any questions. Give us just a moment, okay? Yes, Judge. It doesn't appear that they do. All right. May this officer be released from his subpoena, Mr. Orman? Yes, Your Honor. Is there any objection, Mr. King? No. Sir. All right, sir, thank you. Good day. Call your next witness, please.
shall not swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, please be seated. Could you please tell us your full name? My name is Christina Angelique Blosh. Can you, can you spell your first, middle, and last name? Sorry, you were probably going to do that. You're fine. So it's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. Angelique is A-N-G-E-L-I-Q-U-E. Blosh, B-L-A-C-H-E. Ms. Tishmaguire, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Afternoon, morning. I did. Did that go into the early morning of July 4th? It did. Can you tell us about July 4th? What do you remember about that day? Can you repeat the question, sorry? Sure. Yes. What do you remember yes. about the day of July 4th prior to going to the movie? I had to work. I and was. You're soft spoken. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to ask you to speak <laughs> right into the microphone. We just had a witness who had a very uh, <laughs> low voice. Uh, and. <laughs> Uh, could be heard easily, but uh, you're soft-spoken, so I'll ask you to speak right into the mic, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Ms. Tish McGuire, ask the question again, please. What do you recall about July 8th, well, prior to the movie, or that day? I had to work. I work at Red, well, I previously worked at Red Robin. I was a manager. And? Yes, ma'am. Were you managing that day? I was. Who do you work with? That would have gone to the movie theater. Okay. Um, I went with Sully. He's the original reason that I went. And then mm -hmm. Farah, Heather, Tony, Bryson, Maria. If I spoke too fast, please let me know and I will repeat. Probably slower for the court reporter. Okay. So I went with Farah, Maria, Sully, Heather, Bryson, and Edgar. Sully was a, a mid-manager as well as a very good friend outside of work. And do you know his full name? Alex Sullivan. We were going, um, I didn't know at the time why we were going, um, but it was his 27th birthday. How did you get tickets? For we bought them once we arrived. Um, Sully, Bryson, Tony, a few of them had already had tickets. So they ended up switching theaters to be in the theater with us. What time did you get off of work? An exact time I can't give you. I can approximate. I, approximately about 4 p.m. And what did you do between? We, go and sit, we went and sat at the team member table. That's how I ended up finding out that they were going to the movie that night. Sully came in, and he was super pumped about going to the movie. And he was just chatting it up, and like, oh my god, we're going to go to the Batman movie. And I asked if there was any room for me to go, because at the time I did not drive. So I would need a ride. So he said, sure, of course. I was like, well, can we swing by so I don't smell like burgers and fries? He said, yes, of course. And so we swung by my house, and then we headed to the theater. Um, it's just a table where we go um, when we sit on break. So it's just a generalized table where only team members can sit, so that way we're not affecting other restaurant goers. Ms. Ms. Tish McGuire, is your microphone on? Oh. It is now, Your Honor. Right. Thank you very much. Apologize. Okay, there you go. Now, so this is at Red Robin, a team yes, member table at Red Robin. Okay. So you're sitting around. Sully's telling you, super excited about going to the movie theater. And then how do you end up getting to the theater that night? Sully drove. So we stopped by my house, and then we went to the theater. All right. Now, do you recall where you guys parked when you got to the theater? Right in front. Right in front? Mm -hmm. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked for purposes as 4739. All right. This is an aerial diagram of the theater. And just to kind of orient you, this is the front of the movie theater, back of the movie theater. Does that seem correct to you from what you remember the movie theater you went to on July 19th of 2012? Yes, ma'am. And could you tell me where you parked when you got there? Well, Sully parked. Well, so, thank Sully you. Sully parked. And then we parked right up. 
All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Now, what did you do after you parked in the parking lot? We went in to buy tickets. And were you able to get tickets? Yes, ma'am. Do you know what theater number you got tickets for? We got tickets for theater nine. And then Sully and myself realized that they were in a different theater because the lady said their theater was full. So at that point, we discussed, it was probably about a five, ten minute conversation trying to figure out what we were going to do, if we were going to split up or if we were going to go in the same theater. We decided that they would switch their tickets to come into the theater because that was the only way we could all sit together. And we are all a very close-knit group. Now when you're saying they, who's they? The other team members. So Farah, Heather, Maria, Bryson, Tony, so everybody else that was going with us from Red Robin. So they had to do a process to switch their tickets from a different theater to get into your theater, theater number nine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now what else did you do when you arrived at the theater that night while you were waiting for the movie to begin? Well, we arrived really early. Um, oh, like that. 5.30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, like you wanted said, really good seats. Sully wanted really good tickets okay. and really good seats. Um, so we went into the theater, got the tickets, and went and sat in line. They had a, a thing up against the wall right before you go into Theater 9. So we all sat right there, and we played cards. We went to the concession stand. We had snacks. It, just the usual hangout with your friends. And was the usual hangout on the floor of a movie theater <laughs> for five hours? I, for us, yes. For us, yes. Now, were you actually inside the theater when you're talking about inside Theater 9, or were you outside the physical building? We are not inside the theater at this point. At this point, we are up against the wall outside of Theater 9. And what sorts of things are you doing, you know, other than just chatting while you're out there? Uh, we played some cards. I brought another board game. Um, we went to the concession stand. We grabbed popcorn, some snacks. So... Now, at what point in time did you actually, were you able to go into the theater to get your seats? An exact time, I, again, I'm going to have to approximate probably about 7.30 p.m. And were you able to find seats at 7.30 p.m.? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and where were you able to find some seats? Um, we, set, we tried to sit as close to center as possible. This was Sully's idea again wanted to be directly in the middle of the screen to be able to have the best view of the movie. And were you able to get those seats? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And would you say it was approximately in the middle of the movie theater at that point? Approximately, yes, ma'am. And do you recall where your actual seats were and where Sully's actual seats were? Yes. And where were those? Uh, row 12 and 13-ish. Yeah. And is that up in the stadium seating part? Stadium seating, yes, ma'am. And it, where your actual seats were, were you guys more towards the center, you and Sully, or were you towards a right aisle or a left aisle? I was one seat away from Sully. He was dead center. Okay. And were you to the right of him or to the left of him, if that's the movie theater screen right there? To the left. Okay. To the left. And what did you do once you got into the theater at 7.30, while you had all this time before the movie to begin? Again, it was a friend hangout session. Uh, multiple seat changes, people going and talking to the other people as they were arriving, because... Originally, not everybody was able to show up right at 5.30 in the afternoon. So um, it was a steady flow of people showing up and talking and hanging out. And now, can you tell me who actually came with you? When you arrived with Sully, were, was there anyone else directly with you at that point in time? Sully and I arrived, and then Edgar and Jasmine as well. Okay, and do you know Edgar and Jasmine's last names? Edgar Nava and Jasmine Kennedy. And then who do you remember arriving next? That gets a little fuzzy because they kind of trickled in, so I'm not going to go and even try to guesstimate. And that's apologize. fine. But if you could for us, since we didn't know their last names before, if you could tell us the last names then of people who started to arrive after that. So it's Heather Snyder, Tony Bilipondo, Bryson Bilipondo, Maria Carbonell, <coughs> Annalise, and she, can, she goes by either Padillo or Carbonell because and then Armando, Padillo, or Carbonell as well. So that's your whole group at that point in time? Farah Sudani, and then she had two people with her as well. And do you know the names of those people? I just know as Mike. I don't know last name. And was one of them named Mike, or were both of them named Mike that were with her? I don't know the second person's name. I just know one of them was named Mike. So your friends start to arrive, 
all different times. Do you remember anything particularly unusual happening before the movie began? Before the movie started, I noticed a couple of the theater workers going up towards the front right-hand side of the theater to mess with a 3D glasses stand, and they moved it from one area to underneath where the projector screen is. Anything other than movie theater workers doing their tasks in the movie theater? No, ma'am. And at some point in time, do previews actually begin for your movie? Yes, ma'am. What do you remember about the previews of that particular movie? So my friend Sully <laughs> stood up in the middle of multiple of the previews, but the one that I distinctly remember was the one we were talking about on the way to the theater, which was Superman. We had discussed, again, going to a midnight premiere of a superhero movie. He stands up and he's like, yeah, and like waves his hands in the air above his head and just hoots and hollers, and of course everybody else starts joining in, because again, if they're at Batman, they're going to be at Superman. So. Again, if they're going to be at Batman, they're probably going to be at Superman. So, I have a bunch of people joined in, hooting and hollering. So, Anything else you remember, particularly about the previews? No, nope, that was it. And then at some point in time, does Batman The Dark Knight Rises begin? Yes, ma'am. How long was it into your movie before something happened? Approximately 15 minutes or so. And do you have a particular memory of what scene was playing in the movie? When that uh, happened? It was a fight scene between Batman and the Catwoman where she's trying to steal the jewels. And when that scene was happening, what happened? <laughs> so the first thing I remember at this point is a sound... Like, it goes, Poof! and it, it went up and over, and <coughs> at first I thought it was antics. I thought it was like, because I've been to other midnight premieres, and I've seen people dress up in costumes. I've seen them do, do little skits in the front. I've th seen them throw T-shirts. So I just thought it was antics. I thought maybe it was like bats flying over, but I've, I've heard that sound before, and I knew I'd heard it, but I ignored it. I continued watching the movie. And next thing I hear is metal clinks. It goes clink, rolling, clink. And you know when like metal rolls across like grit or dirt or you can, I heard it roll and I knew that I'd heard that sound before. And so I hear it roll, clink again, roll and clink again. And it, it shot up and over and landed like a couple rows ahead of me. So when you just described it sh shooting up and over, if you were staring at the movie theater screen, again, pretend this is the movie theater screen, w what direction does it come from? From the right-hand side. And right-hand side, sorry. And what direction does it go towards? Towards the left-hand side, right about a couple rows in front of me, so probably where she's sitting. Now you just told the jury that you knew you had heard that sound before. Yes, ma'am. At the time, could you place where you had heard that sound before? Not at the time. Not at the time. Today, as you stand here today, do you know what that sound is from? Yes, ma'am. What was that? That was a canister being shot. And what kind of canister are you talking about? A gas canister. So after you hear that clinking, what's the next thing you remember? Next thing I remember is starting to see muscle, mu muscle, sorry, muzzle flashes. And by muzzle flashes, I mean the, the thing you see when a gun fires, you see kind of, it, and it'll be described as fireworks too by people who have never seen this before, but you'll see a flash and it's like a burst that, of light that comes from the end of a gun when it's being fired. Now, muzzle flashes is a kind of particular term. Do you have particular experience with firearms? Yes, ma'am. And what sort of experience with firearms do you have? I, uh... Overruled. You can answer the question. Okay, thank you. I, uh went to Baghdad and have been in gunfire. I have seen it myself. Why did you go to Baghdad? Objection relevance. Overruled. Uh, I was in the military. What branch of the military were you in? Overruled. Air Force. And what sort of training and experience did the Air Force give you with firearms? You have to qualify and you have to make a certain um, amount of rounds into a target in a certain area in order to even go over to Baghdad, so you have to be proficient in weaponry. 
And what type of weapon range did you have to be proficient in to go to Baghdad? M16A2. And did you meet your proficiency tests? Yes, ma'am. How many times did you have to qualify? Sustained. So your experience with weapons in the Air Force um, was what you had known to be muzzle flashes in the Air Force consistent with what you saw in the theater that night? Yes, ma'am. So you see these muzzle flashes, and how would you describe the light of muzzle flashes? The best way I can describe it so everyone could understand is when a camera flashes. That's the best way I can describe it. Just quick, just flash. And where in the theater do you see those muzzle flashes coming from? The right-hand side of the screen. And closer to the front of the screen? Of the yes, ma'am. So what, what happens after you see those muzzle flashes? Uh, once I realized it was gunfire, I ducked down behind my seat or behind the seats that were in front of me. Now, did you physically get out of your chair and get down onto the ground? Somewhat, yes. It, it was hard because everybody else was doing the same thing in my row. So I kind of went to, this, went to the side and down. So if that's the movie theater screen, is your head more towards the right? I went, to, I went to the left. The left? Yes, ma'am. And how is your body positioned on the floor? Um, well, I, I didn't get to the floor before I was hit. Sorry. No, you don't have to apologize. So describe for the jury what happened. So I went to the, to the left to get down, and I was using the, the seat in front, of, in front of me. And as I was going down, um, I just kind of felt like this heat sensation in my leg. And so as soon as I felt it, it was my right leg. As, as soon as I felt the heat sensation go into my right leg, I took my hand down to feel, I felt, because I saw the blood come up in front of my face as I was going down. So I felt my leg, I saw blood. So I just continued, continued falling to the ground and got down. Um, everybody's screaming. There's a, like just, I've heard people, I'm getting shot. I've been hit. I, stuff that, that I've heard before, but I hadn't been hit before. So it was just, sorry, go ahead. Where had you heard that before? Objection. That means you can answer the question. Iraq. So can you ascertain what's going on with your friends who are on your left and your right at this point? Um, after I got onto the, to the ground, yes. I started trying to look and see what had happened. And at one point I noticed Sully. And so I reached over on my right and tried to reach. I noticed he had a blood spot on his head. So I reached up to see, but I couldn't quite reach him. So I didn't know what was going on with him. Edgar was laying next to me. Jasmine was on the other side. And at this point, Bryson, Tony, Maria, Annalise, and Armando were trying to get out of the theater. As, again, as far as a time span, I, I'm not even sure. It felt like an eternity, but I, I couldn't. it could probably be 30 seconds that all this happened. So while you're looking at your friends and seeing what's happened to them or if they're okay, what are you hearing still during this time? Um, well, there's, there's gunfire a lot of the time, and then at one point you, it just went silent as far as gunfire goes. And that's when Maria, Tony, Bryson, um, Annalise, and Armando ran out of the theater. Are you hearing anything else? Just gunfire at that point in time. Yeah, just gunfire. Are you still hearing screaming in the theater? Yeah. Well, yes. Sorry. That's, yes, they're screaming the entire time. And so they are trying to flee mm -hmm. the theater at that yes, point in time. And what are you doing? Um, when they go to flee, they're like, "Come on, come on, come on, crispy." So I turn. Stop here for a second. Sorry, crispy. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's a nickname I was given by everybody that I was there with. It's what I went by in the restaurant industry. Um, it was given to me by Tony. Um, so knowing that I'd been hit in the leg, I was still going to try to get out. 
and try to go with them. But, so I had to figure out a way to get up. So I, I turned around to the seat that was behind me. I used the, the back of the seat to get up. And um, I, I got up to that part. And then I got up to the back seat. And as I was standing up, I just felt a snap in my left leg. At this point, I realized that I had been hit in my left leg too. So what happened when you heard So that? I fell back to the ground. Edgar actually broke my fall. And uh, he, he let me know that I was laying on his arm. And so I got off his arm. We repositioned. And I laid back down and started trying to figure out. And it was like, bam, 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 quick. So I looked down at my injury on my right leg and just a mess. So I just, my jeans were shredded at this time. So I took my jeans and just started twisting to try to create a tourniquet to make sure that I wouldn't bleed to death. But it just twisted and twisted and twisted and just shoved it into the wound to um, stop the bleeding and wait for help. What are you thinking during this time? <sighs> to be honest, I don't, I don't, at this point... I wasn't thinking anything because at this point is when Jasmine started screaming, I need to call my mom, I need to call my mom. And so at this point is I realized Jasmine is still there with me. And I, obviously I know Edgar's on the other side of me, but Jasmine was there and she's only 16. She's young, I'm her boss, I go into help mode. So I told her, you need to call your mom. Go ahead and call your mom. And I reach up and I hold her hand. And so she starts calling her mom and... Now, are you able to see what's happening with Sully at this time? No, ma'am. Could you see where he was located? Could you see anything? He's still on the other side of Edgar at this point. And was he in his chair still? Was he on the ground? He's on the ground, face down towards us, towards the left-hand side. So you tell Jasmine to call her mom. What do you remember doing after that? After that, um, the alarms are still going off. Everybody's still, there's still screams. Um, officers start coming in to, to take people out. They are trying to assess the situation. Um, one cop comes up the stairs and starts talking to Jasmine. Then he starts asking me if I can walk. He's like, if you can walk, you need to get up. Couldn't walk. I already tried. So I was like, I need help. So he realized that both of my legs were hit and called for more help to get me out. I want to ask you something about um, the shots that were being heard in the theater. Yes, ma'am. Could you, were you able to differentiate at all between different types of shots in the theater? They sound differently, yes. Okay, what did the shots sound like to you in the theater that night? There were some that were very rapid, is the best way to describe it, and then there are some that sound short and just like a boom. That's the best way I could describe it, too. And just so we can day. try to have the jury describe it, could you kind of speak into the microphone with the different booms that it sounded like? So some of them, the more rapid fire would be like boom, boom, boom. And then the, the other ones would be more of a boom, boom, boom. So it'd be like shorter, like longer is the, longer is the best way that I could describe it to you. Based in your training and experience with firearms, were you able to ascertain what sort of weapons you think were being fired in the theater? Sustained. Based just on your regular experience with firearms, what did you think you had heard in the theater that night? I definitely know that, like, as far as my experience goes, that it was a similar weapon to what I've shot in the military. And what weapon was that? The M16A2. So the police officers are there to take you. What happens next? So um, two officers start trying to carry me out, and then they realized that the injuries on my legs, they needed one more officer, so they called for another officer. They started carrying me down the stairs, and we get to right where that main aisle, um, where, right where it goes to stadium seating. We get to that, and they drop me on somebody. The person is not, not life, not moving, not breathing, not doing anything. They just dropped me on him. 
Was that on purpose? No, by no means. Um, they're tired. They were exhausted. You could hear them panting, like, really hard breathing. Um, and then so they reestablished, like, their grips, picked me back up, and took me all the way out the back of the theater. And the front right exit towards the front of the theater. So through the main lobby or? No, ma'am. Okay. So out the, to the right of the screen, if I was facing it, it's to the right out the uh, front exit. So that goes out to actually behind the theater? So behind the theater, yes, ma'am. Okay. So what happens when they take you out behind the theater? Um, there's absolute just, at least from my opinion, chaos out there. Just pe injured people everywhere. And so they set me down next to Jasmine on the ground. And as soon as they set me down, I start holding her hand again. And they start assessing and triaging. And the I just remember the cop sitting down next to me and going, you need to go. You need to go. And I'm like, no, I'm not leaving until she's gone. So they got her and took her. And then be clear I, who's her. Jasmine. Jasmine Kennedy. I told him I wouldn't go until she was gone. She was my responsibility. So they took her, then I was willing to go. Now, were you able to see and observe Jasmine's injuries at that time? Objection evidence. Overruled. I was not. Okay. Were you able to see your own injuries yet at that time? Yes, ma'am. What could you tell? What happened? I could tell that my right leg was injured really badly. Um, my left leg, I, didn't, I couldn't see any injuries at that time. I just knew that it, there was a hole. And could you describe for the jury where these injuries are on your legs? Um, my right femur and my left knee area. And what do you see when you look down at your legs? Um, my shredded jeans, blood. That, yeah, that, that's good enough. Sorry. Are you in pain at this time? Yes. And what sort of pain were you in? Um, there was he heat sensations the entire time. Um, I was groaning because they had picked me up by the leg, and they had to go underneath my right femur area, which is where the injury was. So when they picked me up, that's I was groaning, moaning, um, every once in a while crying out in pain from just the adrenaline. <laughs> How long were you out on the sidewalk before someone came to get you? That I don't know. I know it was quite a long time because they didn't have enough cop cars, ambulances, fire department. They had so many victims. They, didn't, they had to wait for a car. At some point in time, does someone come for you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what happened? Um, the, they picked me back up and put me into the back of a cop car. Um, when they got me into the cop car, <laughs> I just hear Crispy <laughs> from the front seat, and it was Heather Snyder. She was sitting in the front seat. Could you tell if Heather was injured at that point in time? Yes, ma'am. What were Heather's injuries? Overruled. Heather was holding her, her hand to her chest, to the right side of her chest, and she was just holding it. Could you tell what had happened? Uh, I couldn't tell, like, fully what was going on. I just knew that her hand had been injured. Now, is there anyone else that gets into this police car with you, too? Yes. Um, the firefighter that helped carry me jumped in. The, he's like, I'm going with her, and jumps in the back seat with me. Right. So how does he position himself in the back of the so car? So if I'm laying across the witness, witness stand right here, he was like this over me and just riding like that. Now, how are you positioned in the back of the patrol car? I'm laying directly out on the seats, just straight across. Is your head closer to the driver's side or the passenger side? Passenger side. And, the, and then this firefighter's just... Just hovering over me, yes, making sure I'm okay. Then you have Heather Snyder in the front and then some, with someone driving the car? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and w tell us about that ride in that patrol car. So when they went to go to take off, there was so much blocking the parking lot and the way out that the cops goes, I've got to figure out a way to get out of here. And he jumps the curb and goes to go up to the ambulance area. 
What happens when so you get to the ambulance area? They pull me out of the back seat um, off of one side. I got hooked on the seat belts, and so they were just yanking, trying to get me out. And then they realized that I was caught, so they helped me get uncaught, pulled me out of the back seat, put me onto a stretcher, and then put me into the ambulance. Do you remember if there was anyone else in the ambulance when you got into the ambulance? Yes. What do you remember about that? There was a gentleman laying there screaming in pain. And do you have any description of what this gentleman looked like? Objection, relevant Overruled. The gentleman that was laying there was heavier set, had black hair, covered in blood in his leg. It appeared to you that his leg was injured? Yes, ma'am. Anyone else in the ambulance that you remember? Uh, EMTs. And did they take you somewhere? Yes, ma'am. Um, we got on the road and they started talking about the hospitals being sustained. Right, so can you just tell me about your, without talking about what anyone said in your ambulance ride, if you could just talk about what you remember about the ambulance ride. They decided to go to Swedish. <laughs> All right. And how long did it take you to get to Swedish? It felt like seconds. It was quick. What do you remember about getting to the hospital? Um, the ambulance, or not the ambulance, the EMT um, kept talking to me. He's like, you got you to gotta talk to me. You got to talk to me. You're scaring me. And I, I remember thinking to myself, and I, I can't remember if I said it out loud, but what do you want me to talk to you about? The weather? <laughs> so... But, yeah. And what happens when you get to the hospital? They take me into the emergency room and started procedures. What sort of procedures did they do for you? Surgery on my legs. How long were you at the hospital before they started surgery? Objection. Overruled. Um, minutes. Like, and what sort of surgery did you have? I don't know exactly what they did in the first surgeries. Okay. And the first surgery, so how many surgeries did you have total? I ended up having approximately five surgeries. And did you know the extent of your injuries? At that time, no. Did you eventually learn what had happened to you? I eventually learned what happened to me, yes. And what was that? Uh, I had been shot between, through one leg and out through the other, and then shot a second time through the leg as well. And so could you tell a jury about which leg was which? So the right leg I had been shot through twice, and the left leg I had been shot through once. Did you have any broken bones or fractures? Yes, ma'am. What did you have? Um, my femur, I am missing two inches. It shattered my femur on my right leg. And then the left leg, there was um, a bullet that had gone in and just caused miscellaneous damage. How long were you at Swedish Hospital? A month and a day. And after you were released from Swedish Hospital, did you have to have any follow-up medical care? Objection. Overruled? Yes, ma'am. What sort of medical care did you have to have? Physical therapy, and then I still have to do physical therapy. Did you have to have any other follow-up surgeries after you left Swedish Hospital? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Did you have to have subsequent surgeries after you were discharged from the hospital? Yes, ma'am. And what was the next surgery that you had to have after you were discharged from the hospital? After I was discharged, I had to have the plates and screws removed and replaced with a rod that is in my leg. Was that the only other surgery you had to have, or did you have to have one after that as well? well I had five total, so it, they all kind of run together. But Do you know today if you still need any additional medical care? Objection. Overruled. Currently, I do not, no. Your Honor, if I may approach the witness yes. with what has been marked as... Oh, sorry.
Mr. Stitch, my boy, I don't want to rush you, but we're going to need to take a break in about five minutes or so. Are you going to wrap up, you think, within about five or ten minutes? I think so, Your Honor. Okay, Your Honor, you okay. may proceed. Thank you. All right. Approach the witness with what's been marked as 4668. Four six six seven two six six three two six six two. Okay. Ms. Blash, if you could look at that packet of photographs and see if you can identify the person in that in those photographs. Well, the first photograph, which is Exhibit 2662 is me and the hospital. And then Exhibit 2663, 4668, and 4667 are pictures of my legs. Do those photographs fairly and accurately depict your condition after the shooting of July 20th, 2012, and the several days and weeks and months to come? Over the span of all of my injuries, yes. Your Honor, at this time I'd move for the admission of those exhibits. Any objection? I have no objection to 2662. I do object to the other photographs. We are not contesting or challenging the injuries that um, this witness uh, described, and therefore I'd object as cumulative <coughs> and under relevance as well. All right. Is that the same issue that I've already ruled on or something new? Uh, something new, cumulative as well as relevance. <coughs> right. Relevant, I've ruled on. Then I am cumulative as well, Your Honor. Cumulative of what? Cumulative of the testimony. Okay. The objection to cumulative is overruled. The other objection remains overruled because I've already ruled on that. So, all right. Those are admitted. Uh, that's uh, People's Exhibits 4668, 4667, 2663, and 2662. All of those are admitted and may be published. Thank you. Do you need the numbers? All right, so can you tell the jury who that is? That is me. All right, and if we could have the next exhibit, please. All right, and could you describe for the jury what this is a photograph of? This is a photograph after one of my surgeries where they placed an external fixator to stabilize the uh, femur on my right leg. Okay, we can have the next photograph, please. Okay, and what does this picture depict? This is a picture after one of my surgeries where they had to fix um, the plate and screws and replace it with a rod. And if we could have the next photograph, please. All right, and what is this a picture of? This is similar. Um, these are um, similar. Um, it's from the surgery for replacing the plate with the rod. Thank you. Do you if I could approach the witness with what's been marked as People's Exhibit 1112? Do you recognize that? Yes. All right. And what is that? This is... Um, when I came to see you, we went over where I was sitting and where the cops took me and who was with me and what I could remember of who was where. All right, and does it fairly and accurately represent where you believe you were seated in the theater and where you were exited, where were you exited from the theater? Yes, ma'am. And on July 19th of 2012? Yes, ma'am. Into July 20th of 2012? Yes, ma'am. You know, at this time, I would move for the admission of that exhibit. Any objection? No objection. Without objection, 1112 is admitted. It may be published, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, now, Ms. Blash, behind you, there is a pointer on the stand, and there is a cordless microphone. If you could please grab the pointer and make sure that microphone is on. Is it good? Yep, you're good. 
All right, now if you could please show for the jury where you were seated. All right, the C is where I was sitting. Okay, and what do the other letters stand for? So J is Jasmine, E is Edgar, and S is for Sully. Okay, and could you um, also show the jury what you m notated something on there that, is that where you were dropped when you said that you were dropped on so, that body? Yeah, it says dropped here on a guy. <laughs> And that's the body you had previously described as when you were dropped. You didn't think that person had any life left in them. Objection, Objection. The objections rule. Go ahead. You can answer. Yes. Okay. And then I think you described where you entered the theater, perhaps, on your diagram. Yes. It says we entered he the theater here, and we came up and entered our seats. Okay. And then does it describe your exit path as well? Uh, yes. So I did draw on a line from our seats down the left-hand aisle, all the way down and around, and out the right-hand exit door all right, at the front of the theater. And then when you were brought out from that exit door, which direction did you go? Out to the back of the theater. They went, I don't want to, no, I don't know. Okay, You're okay. <laughs> all right, and you can have a seat now. Thank you. You know, if I approach with Exhibit 4678. Yes. All right, do you recognize person in that photograph? Yes, ma'am. Who is that person? Sully. Alex Sullivan. Now, when you were at the theater on July 19th of 2012, was Alex Sullivan alive? Yes. Have you seen Alex Sullivan alive since then? No, ma'am. Thank you. No further questions. Oh, Your Honor, if I move for admission of that exhibit, please and publish. 4678. Is there any objection to 4678? No? Okay. Without objection, exhibit 4678 is admitted. All right. Do you have any questions? Oh, sorry. It's being published now. Thank you. Do you have any questions, Ms. Pengler? Your Honor, no. Questions. All right. Thank you. The jury appears to have a question, so give us just a moment, please. Council, please approach. jury has submitted some questions uh, and I have found based on the rules of evidence and other applicable rules of law that they are appropriate and so I'm going to ask you these questions now. The first question is when, when the canister was thrown was the entire movie theater filled with patrons? Yes. The next question is were there any vacant seats that you saw? In the beginning when I first arrived yes. Later during the night, no. Next question is, did you see the shooter at all? And if so, what was he doing? And if you saw him, 
was he walking in the theater? And so the first question uh, is, did you see the, the shooter at all? The shooter himself? No. Okay. The next question then is, were the different guns used at the same time? Not to my recollection. Any follow-up questions based on those questions, Ms. Tish McGuire? Any follow-up questions from you, Ms. Spengler? All right. May this witness be released from our subpoena? Yes, sir. Any objection to Ms. Blash being released from our subpoena? All right. Ms. Blash, thank you. All right, folks, it's uh, time to take our lunch break. And so I'm going to ask you to please make sure you follow all the admonishments that I have been giving you throughout. Uh, during the lunch break. Is everybody okay uh, taking a little shorter than an hour and a half and meeting back here at 2? Okay, anybody have a problem with that? Raise your hand. No? Great. Okay, I'll see you back here at 2 o'clock then. Thank you, folks. The yeah, record should reflect that the jury has left the courtroom now. All right, folks, enjoy your break. I'll see you back here at 2, okay? The court will be in recess. Thank you.